Hey guys, how's it going? It's Bali. Um, so, here is uh, my Toronto Micro uh, Marathoner uh, frame design. This is my first frame design actually, uh, but I can show you, I'm going to be showing you um, a bit of my workflow for uh, this frame. And um, also, oh, let me just get this out of the way. And I'll also show you some various features and some design decisions that I made while uh, making this frame. Um, right now it's still in the early stages, so by the time you're probably seeing this, which will be posted after the final video is made, it's probably going to look a bit different maybe, um, but a similar idea is here. So uh, first we'll start off with some early ideations. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll start off with that. Um, so I have a couple of sketches and they all look uh, pretty much the same. Um, well, I guess we'll talk about a bit of the process that I went through um, while I'm doing this anyway. So, um, anyways, I had an idea in my head and I just made a quick sketch. Um, you probably do a napkin sketch, you don't have to be great as long as you know what you're talking about and you can remember what you were talking about. Then it should be good enough because you probably won't be like me who's um, dumb enough to share with the entire world. Um, but <laughs> nonetheless, uh, so this is the frame design that I generally went for a camera on top of the rear motor and um, 18650 cell. Obviously the proportions are really really awful but uh, don't worry about that. Um, and we have a motor, um, two, two motors that are horizontally um, aligned um, going up. Right now this motor over here I've drawn um, facing upwards um, but I've decided to turn that upside down in um, my other drawing because obviously the proportions are off. The main thing is that the propeller is um, underneath the camera which hopefully will allow enough room for um, the props to be out of view. So I did some uh, research and basically what I did is, um, let's see if I can find it, um, I printed out um, my uh, the Nano Long Range from Dave C which is um, basically what this is based off of. Give me one second. And I can't find it. My apologies, I just put it away. Uh, so yeah, I, <laughs> I printed the Dave C uh, Nano Long Range. Um, so uh, this is probably a similar class to what um, uh, the the new class that he's basically made with this frame. Um, and it's not broken because I flew it. I was just playing around with it and I flexed it and I broke this arm and I broke this uh, camera bracket. Um, but don't worry, the weight's going to be the same. Basically what I did first was I weighed it. And um, so we turn on the weight. Let me just turn on the light so it's a bit easier for you to see. Um, so I put it on the scale and this is about 10.65 grams. So I just wrote it down with frame weight. And I also have the bottom piece. This is, I wrote as the canopy, but it's not really the canopy. It's more like a housing or something like that. And this is 2.85 grams. So the weight to beat is 13.4 grams uh, approximately, which is what I calculated it as. Let me just turn off the light first. There we go. Um, and this is the printing process of um, other frames is kind of important in my opinion um, because I also did things like uh, measure it with the calipers. Um, so I measured important components. Well, before it was broken, I measured the distance in between the camera. Uh, but these are standardized usually. So if you go on manufacturers' websites for, say, um, a camera um, or a motor, like the distance between the motor, usually it's standardized. Um, so you can look at that if you don't have the frame on hand. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so the camera, uh, oh, you also have different sizes of cameras and different sizes of motors, so make sure you got the right one. Um, and flight controller as well, you can do the same thing. Um, I also measured things like uh, the thickness of the, in this case, PLA, but normally it'd be carbon, I guess, and the thickness of the arms uh, as well. And uh, the camera canopy thickness as well and since this is a really lightweight component I was curious to see how heavy this was or sorry how thick it was to get it so, so light it's one millimeter thick that's pretty thin so um, yeah that's basically what I did excuse me and I wrote it down and um, I got it over here I also have the screws the screw sizes for the camera the screw sizes for the motor the screw sizes for the flight controller and in this case there were all M2 screws um, with the flight controller it's usually M3 um, mounting but you usually have a dampener in there which is why it's M2 uh, for the thread um, and then I did some quick proportions uh, testing I guess 
Oh, actually, I can show you a bit over here. So these are proportions as well. So um, these are proportions of propellers, um, the flight controller, the 18650 cell, and the 18650 uh, holder. And um, basically, uh, the reason why I used a circle to represent the 18 or to represent the 65 millimeter propeller is because um, here's my ET125. Um, the propeller spins in a circular. Uh, in a circle obviously um, and so I gotta make sure it doesn't obstruct with anything in that circle in that path and hopefully um, if that checks out and then uh, nothing will hit so that's good um, and since uh, 65 millimeters and my circle template is only um, in inches you would just take your calipers everyone in the RC hobby guys you, you gotta have a caliper even if um, you aren't uh, designing frames just because if you order parts online you want to know if the parts fit um, it's really useful to have one of these just get a cheap one on Aliexpress it's like six dollars if you need those are usually plastic but uh, they work just as well I find uh, so 65 millimeters it's about a 2.5 inch hole um, I think it's in reality oh, I could just press inches it's too late but it's normally I think around 2.6 inches but um, I don't think it'll matter too much um, once we get to catting it um, putting it into the computer and such so just draw the circle out, um, and so you have a rough idea of how large each of the components are. Next step is you put it into a, uh, a picture. So um, basically how I did this is I drew a line across um, that's perpendicular, obviously. Uh, I should mention the tools I use as well. Uh, for the, this frame design, I basically just use three tools. You got the ruler, you got, um, I think it's called the tri-square or it's not a t-square basically it just helps you get right angles don't remember what it's called that's okay and we also have um, the circle template of course you don't need a circle template I'm assuming if you're designing frames you already have a 3d printer you can 3d print your own circle template and you can add these markings by little extrusions it's a bit of work and it's gonna be less accurate uh, in my opinion but honestly I don't think anybody's looking for accuracy um, when you're making these kind of drawings so don't worry about that um, basically, I drew a line across and I drew one propeller size hole. And then I drew a line across and then I drew the other propeller size hole. Um, actually, before I did that, I drew the FC in to get the spacing right and I left a little bit of a gap. And I did the same thing on the horizontal. I usually like to um, uh, make all the, the centers um, leading to the flight controller but uh, it's up to you, it depends on your design. Uh, and I just did the same thing, drew a line. You get the idea. So once you get uh, this general proportion right, um, you start the next phase of design. And we have something like this. So I did the same thing here, except I erased all the construction for the proportion, um, pretty much. Well, actually this one, I took the proportions from the previous drawing and putting it in here. But for my next one, I basically just erased the construction of it. Or I left some of it in, I guess. Um, but basically, once you have the basic uh, layout ready, you can start erasing it and add in the individual elements, the different holes you think you'll need, um, and uh, for mounting, and um, basically the aesthetics, and erase the old one, old holes and stuff, and you basically have a frame design. Um, this is for the 65 millimeter version, and this is just a rough uh, drawing and some rough notes, as you can see. And this is the, the final drawing, or the drawing that I'm closest to uh, right at, as of now. Maybe something will change. Um, and this one's for 3-inch. I'll talk about my thoughts on 3-inch a bit later. But, um, yeah, basically, I drew in the, the guiding proportional elements, and then I filled in the gaps. Here you can see the 18650 holder from here to here, and this is the thickness. Approximately, here's the FC. I didn't draw on the camera because I already know it's smaller uh, than the 18650, so I know the approximate size. I don't need to worry too much about that. Um, and then I just sketched it out um, using the ruler and connected them and did what I thought was right. Um, and yeah, and that's how I get to this basic frame design. So once you got the frame design, uh, you're going to have to uh, put it into a CAD program. Uh, I won't go into the CAD process very much because everybody has a different CAD program they like to use. So basically you just turn on the calipers and you um, 
take your two scale drawing. If you're, draw if you're drawing up like a five inch frame, then you're gonna wanna use a bigger piece of paper. Um, this one is a nine by 12 sketch pad. Uh, so it's nine by 12. This is really expensive paper. You can go to the dollar store and get it for cheaper. Um, and honestly for this stuff where you're just doing pencil and paper, you should probably do that. Um, but you can see the 18650 cell uh, roughly lines up. Um, yeah, so you're going to measure it since it's to scale and get approximately dimensions. You probably round it and uh, you're going to obviously take your electronics as well and then measure it as well, hopefully, and put it in when it arrives. Or you can just not do that and wait for it to arrive and then recat it and reprint it again. It's up to you. Um, usually I don't do 3D drawings. Um, this one's kind of 3D. Uh, and the one before wasn't 3D. I usually don't do 3D if we're doing these uh, carbon cut, like water jet style, CNC, uh, two-dimensional extrusions. Um, it's just because it's easier and um, it's more uh, uh, precise in terms of proportion. Um, and it's easier to translate to CAD. But if you have 3D elements, I would recommend drawing it in 3D, um, just so you don't forget them. Um, as you can see, I can't draw, so I didn't do that. But in the future, uh, I will go over my design process of other frames, and I'll probably be making more 3D frames in the future, and then we'll go over that, and uh, if I remember to, and see how that goes. Uh, but for now, this one's in 2D. So uh, then I'll talk about, about um, my design process for this project. So basically what we have here is we have um, a plus configuration, which is really quite rare for anything outside of, well, I think plus is generally orientated for racing uh, pilots. And usually um, they don't have anything else on it. It's not for freestyle and it's basically just a little square in the middle um, that orientates the plus. But, um, in this case, I want to try for a nano long range style, or as I like to call it more, uh, you've probably heard me say this many times, but micro marathoner because um, it's a micro sized quad, it's not nano. Nano's like whoops, I think. Micro is like 3 inch, 2.5 inch, 2 inch. Um, so <laughs> micro. And marathoner because uh, these guys aren't really going long range, they don't have GPS. I mean, you can add a GPS, but it's really going to hit the flight time more than it's worth. So, um, yeah, it's micro, um, and uh, my receiver is going to be built into the all-in-one e uh, ESC flight controller, so it's not going to go far either. And I'm running 25 milliwatts, as you already know, and so basically, micro marathoner. Um, I also chose, uh, no, actually, I prefer running 2.5 inch uh, props, uh, or at least that's what I plan to, because I think it's going to be a lot more... Um, suited for the electronics. I'll go a bit over it again in the electronics episode and the building episode. But basically, if you're running three inches on an all-in-one flight controller on 1S, chances are it has five amp ESCs uh, with six amp bursts. And so if you're running three inch on a 1202.5, um, 11, 10,000 kV or above motor basically, um, you're gonna be drawing a lot more than six amps on max. So either you're gonna to have to throttle limit or you're basically uh, gonna be burning out your batteries because the max burst on most batteries, even the, like the highest end ones, the VTC6s, um, they'll be bursting up to 30 amps and above that you probably don't wanna go there. They're not rated for above there. So either you're gonna to have to throttle cap it on three inch to get that better performance. I'm not sure about the efficiency or you're gonna to have to drop down to uh, 65 millimeters and you'll probably get better performance, I'm thinking. Um, or at least you'll be able to reach the high end of the throttle without throttle capping it. Um, the big problem with plus frames is that uh, you get the, the this propeller in, in shot. So um, yeah, usually if, you, so this is my Mobile 7 here. Um, if you point it this way, then you got it this propeller in frame. So what I've done to uh, try to mitigate that is to invert the motor. And inverting the motor is really not common. Um, I find, uh, at least not as much as I, from what I see from the mine and flies that are available on the market. So if you invert the motor, um, for pusher props, usually they say you get um, more power because there's less um, like things obstructing the, the air intake, I guess. But I would also say that if that's the same logic, then you're probably cooling the motor a bit less. 
um, because the motors are the air is probably coming in from the sides and going in and not passing through the motors where here you're directly above the motor and all the air is definitely going to be hitting the motor but I'm not sure so perhaps the motor cooling is going to be a bit worse but anyways the point is that um, the the camera will not be obstructed by the motors or else or at least if you tilt it up it'll be less obstructed by the motors because it's so far down and um, you're basically the camera is going to be right over here well you probably know this already because um, this is going to be in the future but uh, basically if the camera is over here then you're not going to get any of the, pro the, the prop at the bottom and hopefully that is the case and so that will prevent the need for a dead cat and um, the, the reason for the dead cat is to get the, the camera in front. But the problem with the dead cat is that the weight distribution is a bit weird because if we put the largest amount of weight over here, uh, it's going to move the center of gravity forward. And these, um, these motors aren't going to be providing very much thrust if we look at it like a lever. Um, it's not going to be put, putting as much thrust. So these motors are going to be working harder to lift the same weight that's distributed forward. So uh, my plan is that if we move the battery backwards a bit and we move the, f the motor uh, further in front of um, the battery, which is going to be the most weight, hopefully that will improve the weight distribution and um, hopefully uh, efficiency and flight performance. and have the same benefits and maybe this will even be lighter weight because um, diagonal lines um, if I remember Pythagorean theorem correctly um, they uh, are longer than st just perpendicular straight lines um, to connect to the same places so uh, my thing my plan is that uh, hopefully these uh, straight thinner lines um, will be um, will take up less uh, um, area and thus less um, volume and mass because it's going to be extruded and so um, yeah so that's what's the plan what the plan is um, I did add these uh, triangular supports or diagonal supports because I think it would add rigidity this I'm planning for these pieces to be roughly about the thickness of these uh, these arm pieces um, and so it's going to be pretty thin back here. I think the, the reason, main reason why I did this is because uh, it's going to protect against durability. It's going to add rigidity for um, vibrations and increase the stiffness. But also it looks really cool, I think. Um, I could also do this to make a form of diamond shape. But um, I don't think that looks as cool. But uh, I think it would probably have even better effects if you really wanted to do it like this. Um, I added these little thingies on the end because the motors are quite exposed. One thing I forgot to mention is that I don't actually I don't remember if I forgot to mention, but uh, for the plus frames, um, your front motor is really exposed and it's going to take a brunt of most of the impact. So you got to protect it well, um, and I plan to do that with a little piece at the front. Um, and now we're putting the camera at the front, which means the camera is also going to be um, a center of like. It's, bad things are going to happen to it when you crash, um, but uh, hopefully that's. Um, going to be a bit mitigated because we're going not going to be freestyling or racing these things. They're going to be just cruising, as they like to say. Uh, yeah, so we have these pieces for rigidity. And um, I also wanted to maximize, I forgot to mention, I wanted to maximize um, the, like, the efficiency of the, the weight. Um, so since we're adding a battery tray onto it, I also wanted to make sure that battery tray would be used for uh, supporting... The, or adding additional um, structure and um, support to the frame. So I'll be gluing it um, to the frame. Where did I put my super glue? So normally I use uh, super glue because a uh, super glue, um, seriously? Give me one second. Here we go. So here's my super glue. So uh, the super glue is used for uh, plastics because a lot of other glues like wood glue which is really strong um, doesn't work well with plastics. You can also use epoxies. I've heard epoxies work. I think construction adhesive might. I might be wrong on that. But usually I use super glue because it's the easiest to work with. It works fast. It's also quite strong and it's readily available. So um, if you're gluing together plastic parts I suggest super glue. It's not as effective as um, oh, sorry, hot glue also doesn't work. Don't use hot glue. Well, at least it doesn't work as well. Um, but basically, uh, super glue um, works, um, but it's not the best thing out there. If you can just melt it together, that'd be nice using solvents or heat um, or just printing it in one piece. Um, 
and super glue doesn't fill especially well as well so uh, super glue is not ideal but um, it's definitely uh, really useful for plastic parts so that's probably what I'm going to be using for this I should also mention uh, plastics vary a lot um, so uh, just because um, it says it works with plastics doesn't mean it works with all plastics so you just got to test it out but super glue is cheap you can test it out whatever you want uh, without too much worry um, anyways what was I gonna say yeah so we're gonna super glue uh, this piece um, the 18650 battery tray to add some rigidity and some structure to it uh, to the, the the frame and we're gonna have a canopy at the front here um, I don't know the exact design of the canopy but that one I'll have to sketch out in 3d probably so I probably won't show that and um, yeah I think that's about uh, all the things I have going on with this design um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll probably add to the description if I remember anything that I forgot thanks for watching bye